this world falls a plane. I heard it go. The cat looked up. There was no reason. The plane's engine simply stilled after takeoff, and the light plane failed to clear the furs. It fell easily. One wing snagged on a fur top. The metal fell down air and smashed in the thin woods for cattle browse. The fuel exploded, and Julie Norwich, seven years old, burnt off her face. Little Julie, mute in some room at St. Joe's now, drugs dissolving in the sheets. Little Julie with her eyes naked and spherical, baffled. Can you scream without lips? Yes. But do children in long pain scream? It is November 19th and no wind and no hope of heaven and no wish for heaven. Since the meanest of people show more mercy than hounding and terrorist gods. I saw her only once. It was two weeks ago under an English hawthorn tree at the farm. We looked a bit alike. Her face is slaughtered now, and I don't remember mine. So this is where we are, caught holding one end of a love, when your father drops and your mother, when a land is lost or a time, and your friend blotted out, gone, your brother's body spoiled and cold, your infant dead, and you dying. You reel out love's long line alone, stripped like a live wire loosing its sparks to a cloud, like a live wire loosed in space to longing and grief everlasting. Of faith, I have nothing, only of truth that this one God is a brute and traitor, abandoning us to time, to necessity, and the engines of matter unhinge. This is no leap. This is evidence of things seen. One Julie, one sorrow, one sensation bewildering the heart and enraging the mind. Faith would be that God's works are as good as we make them, that God is helpless, our baby to bear, self-abandoned on the doorstep of time, wondered at by cattle and oxen. Faith would be, in short, that God has any willful connection with time whatsoever, with us. For I know it as a given that God is good. And I take it also as a given that whatever he touches has meaning, if only in his mysterious terms, which I readily grant. I know only enough of God to want to worship him by any means ready to hand. We forget ourselves. Picnicking, we forget where we are. There is no such thing as a freak accident. God is at home, says Meister Eckhart. We are in the far country. We sleep to times hurdy-gurdy. We wake, if we ever wake, to the silence of God. And then it's time to toss things like our reason and our will. Then it's time to break our necks for home. There is Julie Norwich. Julie Norwich is salted with fire. She is preserved like a salted fillet from all evil, baptized at birth into time and now into eternity, into the blade-like arms of God. For who will love her now without a face when women with faces abound and people are so, people are reason while God is mad? Happy birthday, little one, and wise, 
You got there early, the easy way. You might as well be a nun. Look how he loves you. Are you bandaged now or in a sterilized room? Wait till they hand you a mirror if you can hold one and know what it means. <coughs> that skinlessness, that black shroud of flesh in strips on your skull is your veil. You can serve or you can sing and wreck your heart in prayer. Be victim to abruptness and seizures, swellings of heart, mornings when light spreads over the pastures like wings and fans a secret color into everything and beats the trees <coughs> senseless with beauty. And nights, nights after Compline, under the ribs of Orion, you vanish into the sheets, shrunken, your eyes bright as candles and sightless, exhausted, held, held fast by love, held utterly outside and in. You sleep alone, if you call that alone. You cry, God. Julie Norwich, I know. Surgeons will fix your face. This will all be a dream, an anecdote. Something to tell your husband one night. I was burned. <coughs> or if you're scarred, you're scarred. People love the good, not much less than the beautiful. And the happy as well, or even just the living. Mornings you'll whistle, full of pleasure of days and afternoons this or that. And nights cry love. So live. I'll be the nun for you. I am now. <laughs>